In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve for a complex lookup problem where you can return multiple answers. So your lookup is not unique, right? It occurs many times in the data set and we want to strip out different answers. So in the last video that I showed you, I showed you this data set. And in that video, we had a unique data set. We had a list of dates, the name of the apps. So that was the live date of each app and the division that each app belonged to. So this data set was unique because each app in this specific example could only belong to one division. And what we had to solve for was that we got the list of apps like this and based on this row data set, we had to strip out the division that they belong to. So basically we had to strip out the header. The challenge was that this blend here, for example, could be here or here or here. So it could be in different columns. And my approach to that was to use the index function and the sum product function to figure out which column blend was sitting in. So if you missed that video, make sure you check it out. I'm going to put the link to it in the descriptions below. In addition to my link, I've also added the link of the other videos and other methods that was used by the Excel online team to solve for the same problem. I really recommend that you watch those videos because it's always great to see the different approaches that's used by different people to solve for the same thing. I got the question afterwards of how do you solve for this if this data set wasn't unique? For example, if Blend was not just once here, but they could also have a game app and also belong to the game division. So I put Blend here, see what happened to this. Blend is nowhere in utility, but the answer is utility, right? So this sum product is returning the wrong answer. Now, why is it doing that? So let me just highlight this part with the correct brackets and press F9. The sum product that was checking for these exceptions, it returned a bunch of zeros. It's supposed to return just one number, but if it occurs again, it returns the two as well, right? Because it sees a match and it's going to multiply that one, that true with the column number. So it's going to return true. What it does is that some product is going to go through this, add it all up and return it to index. Right? So in this case, it's going to return three, which is completely wrong because it's going to return a utility. And if I copy this also here, I just remove this one. You can see it results in an error because it's going to do one plus three. Okay. So that's going to result in an error. So do not use some product if you're not hundred percent sure that you have a unique data set. So, how could we solve for this for a non-unique data set? Now, this part of the matrix is a good part to use, right? The problem is this sum product is going to go in and add them up. So we want to use a function that's not going to go in and add them up, but to strip out the one number that's not zero and return it to index. And then if we pull this formula across and look for possible other matches that it strips out the other non-zero number and it returns it to index, but it delivers it to index one by one and not as a total. So the function that occurs to me to solve this is either the large or the small functions, because they're good at stripping like the largest number, then the second largest number and so on. And in this specific case, I would probably use the large function because then I work with non-zero values first. The problem with large is, it's not a problem, but it's just that large is not like index. It's not programmed to work with these arrays, right? So when you use large in this form, so if you plug in this matrix in the large function, you have to press control shift enter. One thing that occurred to me was from Mike Gervin's control shift enter book is the aggregate function because aggregate 
is programmed just like the index function to be able to handle arrays. And in the aggregate function, you also have large. So that's what we could use instead of some product, right? But this part of the matrix, the same one we can use as well, but we just have to plug it in to the aggregate function. So let me just switch to this sheet, okay, where I have created a non-unique data set. So in most cases, the apps occur once, but for some of these cases, like Perino here, I added it, I think in this case, three times. Okay, and some apps occur two times, and most apps occur one time in one division. So I changed this data set up a bit that they are no longer unique. Okay, so we're gonna start from scratch with our index function. This part stays the same. I'm gonna highlight the area where my answer is, and my answer is one of these three, and I'm gonna fix it. Now I have to be especially careful with the fixing because I'm planning to also pull this formula this way and down as well. How many rows do I want to move down? I don't want to move down any rows in this case. I'm just going to skip that argument. Even if you don't skip that argument, Excel is smart enough to figure out that you don't have any rows. So the argument you give it is probably for the columns, but just for the sake of being consistent with these arguments, I'm going to skip it and we move to the column argument. So this is exactly where this aggregate function comes in. So if we scroll down, we, you, we see the large function, so that's the one we need. Now the next argument, which is actually a very powerful functionality of aggregate, is if you want to ignore errors or not. Now in this specific usage of aggregate, we're not gonna be generating any errors it really doesn't matter what we select. I can just say ignore nothing in this case. Okay, so now I have to input the array where I want to strip out the largest and then the second largest and so on. And this array is gonna be identical to our last array, which was basically to check this data set. Now I'm gonna fix it. Is this equal to blend. Now the fixing of blend, I have to make sure I fix the column, but not the row, because when I pull this across, I don't want the columns to come with it. I'm gonna put that in its own criteria. Now I'm gonna take this matrix and multiply it by the column of these, that these are sitting on. Now I have to close bracket here. So let me just show you this part here. If I press F9, that's gonna generate this whole true false values where it says, are you equal to blend? Yes or no, right? So we should get a true here and we have a true here. The rest are false values. The moment we multiply it with this column argument, we're gonna turn those true and false values to ones and zeros. But this column one, is gonna to return to us two, three, four, because this is column two, column three, column four. And we don't want two, three, four, we want one, two, three. So I'm gonna deduct the column that's just before this and fix it. Okay, and close bracket. So I'm gonna be multiplying this by this. So right here, if I press F9, I get that same matrix that we had before. Okay, so control Z to go back. As the last argument is, which number do we want to access? So do we want the largest or the second largest and so on? Well, in this cell here, in the first instance, we want it to be one, right? But when we drag this, we want this to be two and this to be three. So it should be dynamic. Now, since I have one, two, three written here, like division one, two, three, I could use the right function and just extract the last character. Or if you don't happen to have one, two, three, you can use the columns function and do the columns of this to itself. Columns is different to column. Columns is how many columns are included in your selection. 
When you do it like this, it's just one column, right? Now I'm gonna fix the first one. When I would pull this formula here, until here, that would be two columns, and here it would be three columns. Okay, so that's how I can generate my one, two, three automatically. Now, I need to close bracket one, I think two times, and let's see what we get. So one of the matches that we get is games, that looks good. Let's pull this across, and here we get productivity, and that's this one. One more, error, right? Because this is where it comes across the zeros. Now, the lazy way of handling this is to wrap it up in the if error function. It's probably what I would do if I don't have a huge data set. It's just the simplest way of handling this. But a better way of handling this is to use an if function before you even write this formula. The reason is that when you wrap it up in the if error function, the whole formula is going to run and say, am I an error or not? And then return nothing if it is an error. But if you use an if function before you run this formula, like a simple if function, it will, in most cases that don't have duplicates, it will not even run that formula. So it can be faster on large data sets. But which if function could we use here? We could check how many times does blend occur in this whole data set, right? So if blend, for example, is only two times here, then we can check which column am I. So if I go to column three and this three is bigger than this, it shouldn't even run that index formula, right? So I could use a helper column in this case for my if function and just do a count if, first I need the range, that's my range. I'm gonna fix it. And that's the criteria I'm checking for. Push down. Okay, this is actually also a good way of kind of cross-checking. Perino should be three because there's three occurrences here. Am I getting three different answers? So if the number of columns here, so let me just copy this part. Okay, so if this is greater than this, and here I have to fix the G but not the five, then so if it's greater than this, then it should do nothing. Otherwise, it should run this whole index formula. Okay, so let's pull this, and now let's push this down. That looks good. So Perino has three occurrences, the three different divisions. Tanox has utility and productivity. And that's the one for productivity. Okay, so this is how you can solve for cases that have multiple matches. I hope you like this video. And for more videos like this one, why not subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can get updates when new videos like these come out.